Nice. So, uh, yeah, the, today's talk is about Silent Symphony, but actually I found out that I'm in a Rhapsody room, so I decided to change the name of the talk. It's the Silent Rhapsody. Jarek uh, Potiuk, I'm an uh, independent open source, uh, source contributor and advisor, uh, PMC member and committer in Apache Airflow. Uh, uh, yeah, Airflow, as you can see. Uh, I'm a member of the Apache Software Foundation, also a member of the security committee of Apache Software Foundation. Uh, my links. Uh, and I'm the, one of the few lucky people who are fully paid for their open source contributions, and I love it, and I recommend that, and I would love to have more people to be able to do that, and I work on that. Uh, agenda. So today we will do, I will tell about Airflow and Orchestra, and you will see in a moment what it means. A uh, few things about behind the scenes. I will tell a few things, a few words about few, some unsung heroes for Airflow being successful. Today in the, in the first two keynotes, Airflow was uh, named twice, and I was like so happy because it means that some of the things we do actually work, uh, and I wanted to show some some base on which it work. And at the end, call for action for uh, listeners. So a few words about Airflow, what it is. Who knows Airflow here? Quite a few people. I will not go into many details, but Airflow is basically an orchestrator. And what it means is that it doesn't do much because it just uh, controls other properties, other Apache projects, other services and it just tells them what to do when. And for me, this metaphor is really uh, uh, very close to my heart because as Ryan uh, mentioned, uh, I'm not only the karaoke, but I, I'm a choir singer. I sang for 30 years in a choir. So I'm a musician and one that performs the music and I had conductors in front of me and I know what conductors do. They basically do nothing. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And that's what Airflow does. So Airflow does nothing, and we spend awfully a lot of time to make it do nothing uh, and basically let others do the work, but in the organized way. Uh, Airflow is quite complex. It has a number of components, 90 providers, which means that we are releasing 90 packages to, to PyPy every two weeks, more or less, or up to 90. We have 790 dependencies, which means that we are depending on 790 other projects which is like a lot. That's a very big outlier in the community. We have some container images, we have Helm chart, we have Python client, and it means that all these have to work together somehow and we have to keep control over that. So that's it about Airflow. I'll talk now about orchestra. So who was uh, at the concert recently or maybe you know in the past uh, of music? Yeah, so what you see, a lot of people. Not necessarily this kind of music. It could be any concert. Any concert? Any concert? Anyone? Yeah, more people? Yes. So what, what you see there is like an orchestra playing uh, wonderful music, and you hear the music. You, hear, you see all those people who are playing, playing. You see that uh, the conductor, who, as we know, does nothing, just waves the stick, lights, stage, orchestra, and this all has to be connected and play in tune. So that's what you see when you uh, experience the concert. But what you don't use, but you don't see, is this guy, and lots of other guys like this. So someone who actually makes the whole orchestra play. There is someone in the back end, just fine tuning the piano, fine tuning all the instrument, and making sure that the stage is set, that the lights are set, uh, or like here, <laughs> people sitting in the back end, making sure that our microphone works. Yeah, you don't see those people at the concert but they are absolutely necessary for the concert uh, to happen. So I'll tell about uh, these things that he does, these, these tools that he uses, and this guy here. So that, that's, that's my talk. Um, so what I think is a very basic thing that should, be work, should make uh, projects as successful, open source projects as successful as Airflow, uh, is uh, in, in our case, I think, like CI and developer tools, development tools to make, sh make sure that you can easily contribute and, and run the project, and CI to keep things in check, that they are absolutely necessary uh, base in order to make sure that you can regularly release, release project, that it contains as little bug as possible, that you can actually uh, contribute very smoothly. This is, this is, for me, this is something that I take care about for like last four years. 
So CI/CD, uh, in our case, continuous integration, continuous development is first pillar of the whole uh, kind of this fine tuning of the instrument, fine tuning of the orchestra. So we have a lot of things in our CD, CI/CD. We have static checks, pre-commits. I will tell a little bit more, more about in a moment. We have documentation building. We have all kinds of testing, uh, including, and something that I just added, I merged the PR two days ago uh, at the conference, uh, uh, the, including the check that our lowest dependencies, we have 790 of them, that we, are, uh, we, we have the right lower binding, so like that we don't have an outdated specification for our dependencies if somebody adds a new feature and installs all dependency that it still works, so we just do all the automated testing then, but a lot of tests. I will not go into detail of those, but we have a lot of kinds of tests. But also our CI CD makes sure that we can reproducibly install, a, install Airflow anytime because it, this installation is actually happening every time CI CD is run, every time, time PR is uh, green. But also we are testing future compatibility for our dependencies, which means that if some of our dependencies uh, break Airflow, we know not at the moment <laughs> when user experiences that, but our CI CD on the main actually takes the latest dependencies and checks if they are not breaking our tests. And this means that we are actually one of those projects that reach out to other projects, one of those 790 in like hours after they introduce a breaking change because our CI fails. So we are, we are just testing this as well. And if you look at, uh, this is our CI, uh, built, and it's, it doesn't look like big, but you can see those, those arrows down there, with, those are folded tests. So when you actually look at our CI, this, you, you see that it's more, and actually when you look here, this is the scroll bar end. So this is like, this goes really down uh, a lot, quite a lot, of, uh, quite a lot of tests we have, and we have this kind of graph, this is a DAG, like, in, like Airflow DAG, but it's in GitHub Actions, of our CI jobs. Uh, and if you can see the whole thing, that it takes one hour, eight minutes, which is actually quite fast because we do a lot of optimizations there. Uh, but normally, normal PRs, it takes, it takes a lot less time because we have selective checks that only run the tests that are actually necessary for a particular PR. So sometimes it's like as short as five minutes. But the full one takes one like more than one hour. So that's the first pillar of the heroes that make the things work. But the second one is uh, these are the dev tools, because it should be easy to start developing project. Airflow has, it was more or less 2,900. We crossed 2,900 two weeks ago. Nobody noticed. I just noticed a few, few days later that we have 2,008 or something, 2,908. Uh, and this is the biggest number of contributors out of uh, uh, all the Apache projects. Uh, we bypassed Spark three years ago, and we continue uh, increasing our uh, advantage uh, over Spark. So we have contributors and maintainers, both have different needs. We have CI CD that keeps things in check, but the role of DevTools is uh, two things. Like One thing is for, con for new contributors to help them to contribute, so make it as easy as possible to start contributing and get the feedback of what they do, whether it's good or not. Uh, but also it should help maintainers to release. So the dev tooling we have also contains all the release management tools like preparing the packages, uh, releasing them, testing them, being able to test the, uh, the provenance or S-bombs, to generate S-bombs like for security reasons. Uh, all the release management tool is part of our dev tooling. And, uh, and those two pillars are absolutely necessary for every project to succeed when it reaches a certain size, where you have lots of contributors. And some people think about those two things separately. But for me, always, for all my career, CI, CD, and dev tooling was the side of the same coin. Because if you don't test your dev tooling on the CI, it just doesn't work. Because it breaks and you don't realize. So. Uh, what happens when the CI CD job fails? How do you actually reproduce the failure locally? And how do you really run your, the same test and see that they fail in the same way? Because the only way to fix the problem is to be able to 
run it in the same way and get it fail, and then you can fix. If it works, you fixed it. So often in many projects you have this work for me syndrome. I have this environment with those dependencies. So imagine this 790 of those in our case, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, but we have to, our dev tooling have to make sure that the works for me syndrome is not there, that everyone can easily have the same environment as, as everyone else and as our CI CD, because that's where you see the failure and you want to reproduce it. But it also introduces, so, uh, so our dev tooling, in, we have the 790 dependencies, so we have to have a way to have this common test execution platform. So our tests are actually using the same dev tooling that you are using locally, that you can use locally, can be used for, C, on, is actually used on CI CD to run the tests. And we test everything, as I mentioned, this is all Airflow providers, container image, chart, client, release processes, this all. If some of this, preparing some of those, for example, doesn't work locally, and you find out when you want to release, that's too late. Yeah? So in our case, all of those tests are actually run with every PR that affects, like, you know, testing script or, you know, the development scripts. So this is all actually, all our, all our release management tooling and manual execution and preparation is actually run on CI with, with the builds, and we see that it works. Because before, before, before that happens, and it's like 100% sure when, when the next release happens, it will not work. Yeah? But now it works uh, every time because we know we check that in our CI CD. Indispensable part of the development tour, in our case, at least, are pre-commits. So pre-commits is sometimes you have a code in your, in, your, in your project that is kind of like have to be copied into places, for example, or have like one source of truth, but you have to put it into places in different formats, for example. But also there are some checks that prevents you from doing bad things without actually running unit tests. Uh, they are very quick, usually, you know, pass, um, linting the YAML file or linting the Python code. So they, this is something that we do with pre-commits, and I would recommend anyone who uses Python use precommit.com, and there are other frameworks, similar frameworks for other languages, uh, because it leverages the git pre-commit feature, which means that you can install it locally very easily, and it runs all the check or, or when you are doing commit locally. And the same checks are run on our CI. And this, is, this has some really nice properties. I will not get into details, pre-commit installed. We have 132 different kinds of pre-commits installed uh, or the, <laughs> included in our pre-commit configuration. So like classic static check, the single source of truth, of truth that I mentioned, generating documentation, oh, generating licenses. This is, this is the perfect one. I forgot how to do license adding because our pre-commits are adding them for us. I don't have to think about that anymore. This is the biggest, biggest feature of pre-commits. Uh, updating version. So when we update version, we just have a script that will do it out for us automatically uh, during pre-commit. Uh, and preventing some common mistakes, like first line of defense. The, the sooner you find out the problems, the better. If you find it at the commit time, it don't, won't even hit the CI because you find, found it locally. And we automate a lot of stuff. We automate everything. So automate and automation is my second name. And uh, I'm, like, I'm everything, everything someone does, if we have a, okay, fixing a problem because of some kind of, you know, uh, formatting or something, it will not get passed until we, it also is accompanied by, by an automation that fixes it. So just fixing it is not enough. It has to be automated so that it doesn't repeat in the future. So I couldn't fit it in one screen. Uh, it's too long. So this is, the, this is what happens when our CI builds run. Yeah, you have to do it like that. Because these, those are all the pre-commits that are run. And then you see green everywhere, which means that all the pre-commits passed. And there are plenty of them. We have a lot of things. And in our case, it's very easy because they are written in Python. Yes? Both. Both. So pre -commit, when you run pre-commit install, it runs locally on your machine every time you do commit. You can run it also with our dev tooling by issuing a command. But one of the steps in the CI, one of those green checks that you saw before, is running all those pre-commits. And this is the output of the CI running the, same, the very, very same pre-commit that we are running locally. So again, CI and dev is the same, it's just running, reflecting what you can do locally. And this pre-commit is, is fantastic. So how our, our dev environment looks like, so we have two options, local VNF, which is uh, in, if you know Python, 
uh, it's like uh, a local virtual env when you can install things manually and pip, pip install minus e and then you specify what you install. It's standard compliant finally as of January 2024, not a long ago, I converted it to use the latest PEP and standard. And easy, so easy to set up and connect to your IDE so that you can very easily debug things. Uh, it integrates with build frontends like Hatchport with their, the packaging. Is, <laughs> I've learned at PyCon US three weeks ago that packaging is the most complex part of Python. And I agree, yes. <laughs> most confusing part of Python as well. <laughs> Uh, so it, it nicely integrates. Anyone can use their own tooling to, to run and install Airflow locally on virtual env. And it's pretty standard right now. I mean, after we converted to those standards, we're using PyProject Toml and specification of how to build the project. And this is, uh, right now, packaging is in a, in a rather, rather good state, I would say. There are some cons. Because we have providers and 700 dependencies, do you imagine how, how long time it is? It, is, it takes to create Python virtual env with 700 dependencies when you install it. I mean, it depends. If you are using UV, which is a great new tool for installing, it takes four minutes. If you use pips, pip, it's about 25, so something like that. So, uh, of course, people have Mac OS, Linux, ARM, and some of our 700 dependencies require a MySQL client library to be installed in the system, for example. So when you try to install it without it, it doesn't work. So it's not as easy to install some of the providers. And works for me syndrome. Like, who is regularly updating their virtual environment? <laughs> I see no hand. Okay, yes. Oh, thank you. Good, great. I don't. I don't, because it's still, like, no, it doesn't make sense. Like, just remembering about that. Yeah, so you probably, in Airflow case, where things are added every few days, you probably, two days after you installed it, your environment is already outdated. It doesn't have the latest dependencies. It's quite likely, actually. Uh, and then something that works for you uh, fails on CI, but it works for me. Yeah, yeah, of course, because CI has a different version of this, this particular library. And uh, this, is, this is the problem when you're using local VNF. But this is the good thing, so you can very easily debug, you can put a breakpoint, you can run the test, you can see the test results so in, and in your EDA. So local virtual is cool for that, and people should use it, and we, we recommend people to use it for the general work. But meet Breeze. So this is something that we use for this kind of reproducibility. So I developed it together with a few people there I see Edit, who, who was actually helping uh, to migrate our Breeze development environment to Python because it was used to be 10,000 line of bash. Yes, 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 I know, I know, I know. I wrote it. I wrote it and I was so lucky we could remove it thanks to Edit, among others. Among like, there's Borna also. So now it's a Python project. It's a CLI that you run and it has a number of things that you can do. Release management, running static checks, building packages, uh, building documentation. All this is a part of the CLI that we developed. Uh, and yeah, it's a basically a, a Python wrapper over Docker Compose to make it very easy to start and build several containers. It avoids works for me syndrome because it has automated build. Uh, like it tells you where your dependencies are, are out of date and suggests you to rebuild, not forces you, but it tells you, okay, you can now rebuild, you should rebuild. You press yes and it gets rebuilt with latest dependencies. And it's fast, it's optimized to use caching so that it doesn't take 25 minutes, but probably 20 seconds sometimes. It has all the dependencies in and all the external dependencies in, so we can also use it, the whole image which we are using there can be used for SBOM generation and for security checks. And this is something that I'm discussing as next steps for improving security of Airflow. Uh, it's super easy to reproduce the tests or, or check the runtime environment in there. And it's the same thing on CI and local dev. So basically our CI uses Breeze, full stop. Everything that happens in CI is uses the same thing that the Breeze development environment does. And it helps to automate release management work. And for example, we use it for generating S-bombs uh, in an easy way. Every, and, and now it's part of the release management process to generate S-bombs while you are building the packages, for example, or doing some dependency analysis. Or right now, the last commit, it's used to, 
to like drop all the dependencies to the lowest possible ones and run all the tests on this version and see if the dependencies should be bumped because somebody used a new feature. This is with Breeze, and you can run it locally, and it also runs on CI. Or, for example, we use it to test providers for with old versions of Airflow as of three weeks, I think. So we are doing full back compatibility check, for example. Uh, and it also has some nice features, like, for example, okay, there is comment which is not visible, but uh, you can read it later. But the result is, okay, this is a comment that is very useful that allows you to get the latest version of Airflow from main, uh, install it and run it, all the components, multiple components together, each in separate terminal, as you see, we are using MOOCs. So you can see scheduler, web server, and worker running, and, and you have a command line that you can query the system all inside the same Docker Compose, uh, Docker container, and you can, and uh, as a result, what you get is running, running Airflow that you can just use. So you can test the latest version, main version of Airflow with all the latest providers by running one command, and it's, it sets it up, and, and you, you got it running locally, which is actually a very cool feature with one of the contributors added. It was not even my idea. <laughs> this was really cool because, because I saw someone was actually adding this feature, and that was really cool. So we have it all, and it just works, yeah? I can go home, don't do anything anymore. Not as easy, because we have a daily, this is a one week statistics from Airflow. Uh, so as you can see, 96 merged pull requests uh, in week, 30 new pull requests opened. Someone, uh, Taragolis, Andre, uh, merged 20 PRs in this week. Uh, I was a little behind, usually I'm the first. Uh, uh, active issues which were solved, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, 43 authors pushed 96 commits uh, to all branches on main. 510 files have been changed. This is all one week. So things change, simply. If you look at the history of Airflow, uh, we have 25th anniversary. Uh, sorry, 25th anniversary is ASF. 10th anniversary of Airflow. Uh, also, yeah, I changed the template just last minute, and that's why the text doesn't show up in the right way. Of course. Always something. We have Airflow Summit in uh, Bay Area, which I expect in September, which we expect to have like 1,000 attendees, because like Airflow is pretty popular. And as you see, since the incubation, which was 2019, end of incubation, uh, and Airflow 2.0 in 2021, we are releasing a new release every three months, more or less. Yeah, and you see all those releases, and you see the activity this is number of commits the green the green ones yeah so like we see a, a lot a lot is happening all the time all the time uh, so it means that uh, things are changing and we have to react to some problems which are so, okay. like uh, there are flakes somebody commits a change which was green but every five com every five prs it just gets red because because uh, it has to give the feedback very fast. So once you mail committed or push the PR, you have to get the feedback as soon as possible. It has to be reproducible locally. I talked about that. As little build time as possible, because there are some people from infrastructure. I don't know if there is anyone here who are caring about the usage of our, uh, our runners. So we really want to optimize this and make sure that we are not running 1,000 jobs when we just need one. Some projects do that, apparently. Uh, and also the canary warnings, which means that we have this uh, other dependency is, telling, uh, uh, is releasing a new version, which breaks us. So we have like canary warning. And I love that, that, that term, canary build. Uh, you know, we know where it comes from. The canary is dying in the, in the, in the uh, mine, mines when there is a method. So like first sign that there is something wrong going, going wrong. So canary builds warnings that uh, dependencies break our things. So what, what happens daily? So daily, new dependencies are breaking things. We are doing refactors, growing number of tests, we have, which means more resources. We have flaky tests. We have new types of tests to add. We have security issues to handle and to fix. We have new requirements for security. For example, uh, one of the things that we have in, in the Breeze environment uh, allows that is reproducible builds. So all, all builds of Airflow are now reproducible. So the, the whole CI, CD, and the dev environment has to be continuously evolving, and somebody has to constantly look at that, because basically what happens is this. If you know, 
if you guess what might if you guess what might happen yeah so basically every time we fix something breaks and this is so this is a regular joke that we uh, on slack we exchange between ourselves so why 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 am i'm why i'm telling the whole thing because i think this is super important that we re realize not only that is needed but also that it can work like it works for airflow and it, it, it is great for airflow actually it can work for anyone else but also there are some properties of this kind of job to maintain us. The guy who was sitting there here with this tune, so that's me, that was me basically. And not only, I will tell a little bit, bit more about that. But this is a very low bus factor. It means that usually nobody cares when things uh, work and nobody knows how to fix things because they usually work. And that's the nature of CICD. When it breaks, everyone complains because they want to have their job done. And they, they, they won't fix it. Somebody else has to fix it, and that's the, the, the one guy usually, that, that's my experience, or maybe few, who are doing that. Uh, the, so almost no one gets involved. And there's good reason. I mean, I, I don't complain about that. It's just a state of fact. This is like this, because people don't do it daily. The daily, they contribute code which do, which add, that adds functionality. They don't add code for CI. So when it breaks, they don't know where to start even. So this is not a complaint because the tooling isn't familiar. People take things for granted. They think that if it works, for worked for like one month, month and it stopped working, then something might have, must have happened. But sometimes it's just, you know, GitHub doesn't work, yeah, for example, or has a bug or has a problem. Uh, so as a, as a result, complaints are often and gratitude is very, very, very rare. Like uh, I probably can count on five on my maybe two hands when somebody thanks for fixing a problem uh, with CI. But I don't know, like probably all hands wouldn't be enough uh, in the whole um, in the whole uh, in the whole community of a code to count the times when people complain. Uh, so it's a very ungrateful job and very easy to burn out in, in it. And you have to have special property to do that, but it's absolutely worth it. And you, every project should have few people, not one, because one is like not the burnout. So that, that's why I'm telling that, that we should actually thank all the people who are uh, part of this. So this is, this, these are all the people who actually contributed that. Yes, Edit, you are here, uh, here at the bottom, there is Edit. <laughs> Uh, so those are the people who, in Airflow, actually contributed in different kind of capacity. Yeah. So I'm 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 probably the most involved person, but for sure. But all the other people are actually doing that. Without them, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, for like someone would burn out immediately if they are doing. And you need to have several people like that. And those are the unsung heroes that you never know that they are behind fixing the problems that you don't even know that they existed because they fixed it before you saw it sometimes. Uh, there are some security implications because security comes with uh, its own requirements. Like uh, its complex project is almost like a full job. I do it like pretty much uh, maybe 80% of my 150% I spend on Airflow goes there. Uh, supply chain is getting more complicated, especially with security. Uh, and we need to find a way to help smaller projects, which I'm working on. So there's a project which I'm working on right now to be able to help other smaller, those dependencies of ours to improve their kind of build security and and, uh, and working on it. So the call for action, which I have, uh, choose and deliberately choose your dev tooling that you want to use and it should be combined both ci and dev this is this is my advice as always i always advise advice and make it a priority make someone who is actually focused on that and make people who have uh, have people who can replace or supplant or you know help this person to do that and encourage passionate contributors thank them thank them simply 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 thank them when they are fi when the problems are fixed because those people don't very rarely get uh, get thanked for for all the work they are doing, and there are some ways uh, to do it, like learning from others to uh, other projects like Airflow, for example. See how we are doing that, for example, and apply it to your. No broken policy is very important, so fix immediately when there is a problem. A fix or work around. Make sure that you know your thing is regularly rather green all the time, and when it gets red, you drop everything to make sure that it's not. Yeah, because when when it deteriorates, when you have lots of problems to fix, nobody will do it. And with one someone, well, like 
it, it, no broken policy is really good. So my advice personally, every time I do any change, I do it in the way that I fix something else, like making sure that it's not more mess added to the whole kind of CI development environment, but I'm fixing it and I'm advising that because it will not come in a week or two weeks. This took me, me and the whole team there four years to get where we are here with like thousands of smaller changes and fixing and improving things over time. Okay, obligatory Airflow Summit promotion, September 10th and 14th in San Francisco, California. We have Airflow Summit and uh, everyone is invited, uh, come to see us. We expect 1,000 people, or may, uh, between 800 and 1,000. And yeah, time for QA, if we have one, probably not.